The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. Hi everyone, you're very welcome back to the Maroon and White Pod with myself, Eve Filinski. And me, Marty Harkin. My friend. And this week we're delighted to be joined by Aaron Fox. And Aaron Fox is um, the previous or former Galway Minor Manager for three years and was heavily involved with the Galway Intermediates. He was involved with Karen Morkamogi and um, had a little stint with uh, Thurlock Morkamogi as well. And at the minute now, he is a coach and he's a performance analysis. He's just qualified master's in performance analysis. So I'm looking forward to hearing what he kind of does with that now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just what, what that entails, maybe, or what it brings to the table in terms of, of Kamogi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, it'd be just nice and interesting to know um, the, the the difference and and why Waterford are do you know what I mean Yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting now because obviously our seniors are taking on Waterford at the weekend, the weekend and yeah. they're definitely an up and coming team because we did like, we'll chat with Aaron in a few minutes but we did play them last year in the first round of the minor Camogie yeah and uh, you just about you said, just about bet them the yeah you were there at that mm, game remember was, yeah. Um, Sunny, quite sunny weather that day, but yeah, just got over the line. But they were very, very strong and physical. Well, they're up and coming, they definitely mm-hmm. are. I think all they kind of let them down last year, I think, even in the senior, um, was their fitness. So okay. it's going to be interesting now. Maybe they've, you know, just like they see, definitely had all the hurling. I think yeah. it just maybe the, the legs just went a little bit towards the end, but anyway, we'll, exactly. we'll find out a little bit more about that. And the fact that Aaron was involved with Galway, he'd have a little bit of inside information, maybe, as to how. How they work and it might you know have a psychological advantage or even a physical advantage over Galway at the weekend. Yeah, but before we, we we chat to Aaron, how was your week? I see <sighs> as you can see we have happy birthday written <laughs> written over here. It happened to be Aoife's Kifa's birthday. Aoife's <laughs> Kifa. Kifa's birthday. Um, it and, was eleven. Um, was and 11. it was your birthday. And it was indeed, yeah. And I had a lovely birthday at home with the family. And of course she has a little bun here ready for me, <laughs> but we like that after after we the will, pod. Will. Uh shout out to everybody who's been listening to us so far we've got wonderful texts and messages all so positive it's lovely um, isn't it? and it's wonderful to, to to know that people are genuinely interested in tuning in if anything you'll and you'll, having you'll a bit of a laugh yeah exactly but like if if only i genuinely wish we could record us just trying to get onto the computer every single week. We've like, it, it. is it possible? We've done it again this. No, we've done it. We've outdone ourselves this we week. We've outdone ourselves <laughs> this week because we couldn't even get in, <laughs> let alone get on. And look at that week that we told that technical team to leave. I am oh. so sorry. So lads, yeah. wherever you are, welcome please, back. Yeah, come, come back, come back. We we'll give you a bone. Please come back to us. Yeah, yeah. So definitely a shout out to Lizzie Flynn there, uh, who's heavily involved in Camogie all of her life as well and her family as well and uh, hope you're enjoying listening Lizzie and uh, maybe in the next coming weeks or so we might have you on because uh, you've loads of information from Crow Park and as a player as well yourself so uh, thanks for all the positive texts and stuff so yeah and to wish Kifa a happy birthday and would you believe uh, it was so funny obviously we had um, Angela and, and Downey on last week great week mm-hmm. loved it yeah and um, I bought a key for the book um, Ivania Quillen uh, wrote a book kind of the giants of the GA yeah and um, Angela and Anne are on it and Kiefer spotted it so I sent them a little picture off to them so, so it was lovely yeah, yeah lovely to get back a message again and again we got such positive reviews with them two ladies who have won everything um, when it comes to Camogie and so grounded and so so nice and basically telling us that the game is simple. Keep it simple and listen to your coaches, wasn't that and what they said? Yeah. to your coaches. Yeah. And uh, speaking of coaching, a big shout out to our under 16 girls. We're training there tonight and they put in hell of a, an hour and 45 minutes. And we yeah, forgot to tell them to subscribe to the Maroon and White, but I know that many of them are are, are already um with us. So hi to all the girls. And yeah, again, for sure. And well done tonight. And well done tonight. <laughs> and look, at, I'm not going to talk about St. Rayfields ever again, but before oh, we leave it, stop. just a shout out to the boys and look at... I'm As I was telling yeah. you, if I had such a, um, I had such a privilege of being with Sean Welch up in the the press box with uh, Galway Bay FM at the weekend, uh, co-commentating on the game, and it was a wonderful experience. Very what cold. What a game! And what a game! Sure, we were watching it obviously here, but I was listening to you on the radio, and um, but there was about a minute delay between the two, so it was yes. like you either listen to the radio or you watch it on the telly. Yeah. 
So I watched it on the telly then. I, I had to turn you off, my friend, just for I a few minutes until to little, catch up. I was a little ahead, was I? <laughs> you were a little ahead. I'm always you're ahead. Always, you're always, always ahead of me. But. But then Irla comes running in and Martina's on the radio. I said, I know, I know she's on the radio. <laughs> but no, a big shout out to them. It's not about Rayfields, but... They were um, outstanding. Oh, they were outstanding. Just such a pity that it went extra time. And, and isn't it always the case, like, you can just... Do we ever, ever get the rub of the green? Like, they... That's one that got away. I it really feel one it's got one away. that got away. And, you know, it's something to think about when it comes to schools, Camogie or schools, Harland, that, you know, you have a short window mm, in yeah. September to, to Christmas, basically. Yeah. And the massive effort that all the coaches, especially teachers that go out of the way, um, I suppose, beyond the call of duty to, to put in such an effort with those young boys. It's like a county team. Yeah. It is like a county team. Did you notice, actually, well, you might have noticed now from the press box, you probably didn't, but you've probably looked at the match since, but was it number 11 for um, St. Kieran's? He like I always notice because it, it's a major thing that I always notice is he was switching the hands yeah, switching all the time. Hands. And a few of them were and, actually doing that. Yeah, and he bad. got caught. No, he look at he was still excellent, but he got caught a few times where his striking was going off, veering yeah. off to the left yeah. because he was he was switching hands. If you look at how many times we talk about it, we notice ourselves that just girls are setting their ways now and they're just not willing to change. And look, we're not trying to make them change, but we're trying to explain to them. They the kind of should practice. though. Yeah. You it, really it, should. It's seconds when it comes to well, it county ups, standards. Yeah, it yeah. ups your match tempo. And, and he it gets definitely, he got hooked once or twice. Now he was still excellent, you know, but I just thought, God, imagine if he literally just switched his hands. Yeah, but back they were powerhouses. They, they had, were like, brilliant, yeah. They had 15, 16, 19 year olds. He scared them though. Oh, he yeah, scared absolutely. them. Absolutely. Yeah. And look at the future is good. And a shout out again to the boys and uh, well done. And we're very proud of everything that you've done for the school in Camogie. All right. In Camogie, I, in Hurling. You and mean. in Hurling as well. I forgot them. Forgot them. them. Lads, lads, what's she saying at all? Oh, look at So I think we have her and every, you yeah. don't know if it's Camogie or Hurling yeah. because you've, you're winning so much. Oh, yeah, well, nah, no. But you always give me that dig. No, I look at I love Riffles. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, okay. Yes. Is, that, is Aaron with us? I think Aaron is with us. So, Aaron, if you'd like to join us there, if you have your um, computer, if your camera is working, we'd like to see you. And again, like I said, Aaron was with the um, Galway Miners for uh, three years, um, ran a very tight ship, you know, and unfortunately, we came up short on a couple of those occasions, just, you know, came up against obviously better teams on the day. But um, I'm going to find out now about um, his role with Waterford Senior Camogie and see what the future holds for him. Yeah. So, 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 so Aaron, um, are you there? Different. Aaron, how are you keeping? Great to have you on um, tonight. How are you? Good, no, good. How are you getting on yourselves? Great, and delighted to have you, Aaron. Um, I said I've I've heard a lot about you. I've spoke to you on the phone, but I never actually got to, to talk to you face to face. So delighted that you were able to take the time out of your busy schedule and join us for a couple of minutes tonight. The minor Aaron, she was giving out giving out yards last year. Do you know between the schools and the minor and the whole lot? That's well, a... <laughs> and, and well, was... I, I I have a couple I I have a couple of choice words of the two e about them schools. And now I'm getting players. I tell you. <laughs> Hold on a minute now. Oh, the when, wasted when, minute. When it comes to September to March, it's all us, Aaron, okay? So <laughs> it's March onwards, but no, look at, and again, speaking of schools, you know, we're, as you know, we're heavily involved and we, we were very delighted um, that um, you kept the lines of communication open with us when it's when it's coming to the school window because it is difficult. It we're is. finding it ourselves at the moment. But yeah. anyway, enough about schools. Delighted to have you on board. We know you're looking forward with great enthusiasm to the weekend. Um, coming from a different side, Aaron. But just take us back a little bit, if if that's okay, and talk to us about your stint with the Galway Miners when you started out um, as a performance coach or manager, I suppose, managerial role with the Miners. When did all that start, Aaron? Um, yeah, Jesus, it, time flies, really. It was it was in, um, let me think now, it was actually in in the in the Christmas time of 2020, so it was the height of COVID, and um, I was actually talking with uh, Brian Hanley at the time, who was the minor hurling manager, and Brian would have been a a good guide for me, a good mentor. I was quite young at the time, um, and I was you know, leaning on him a small bit as to where to go next. And uh, coincidentally, at the time, Brian Griffin was looking for a minor manager. Uh, and I, I believe the story goes, he turned to the other Brian and it was Brian Hanley that actually approached me and asked me what I'd be interested in it. And um, to be honest, my initial thought was was no, didn't really, 
know anything about camogie, to be very mm-hmm. honest. I, look, I'd be one of many people, let's be honest about it. My sister played camogie, she wasn't a, a bad little player. I can probably count in one hand the amount of times I went to see her play a game. Um, yeah. And I think that's that's a common theme across uh, Jeez, yeah. uh, across across camogie. Um, like myself and my brother would would have rarely gone to see the Caramore camogie girls play and, and they'd all be at our game. So it wasn't something that was really on my, my radar. Um, but I suppose it was put to me as, as a good opportunity, a good idea by, by Brian Hanley and... Um, I said, you know what, I, I, I explore it anyways. And um, just kind of decided in the end, what, you know, what, what's the what's the, what, what's, what's the worst that could happen? It was it was in the height of COVID, things were going to work differently. You know, there was the first year, the 2021, I had it. There was, there were girls were only getting back to school. Um, mm-hmm. Club Camogie wasn't even a thing at that time. You know, it was a summer championship. If you remember, it was lovely. It was a really warm summer. It was great. Aaron, I do because I burnt yeah. the lips off myself. And John O'Gorman <laughs> is still telling me there's a chemist yeah. move <laughs> near Crowbar. Yeah, we, we almost had an emergency in Dublin that day with Ethan the sunburn, <laughs> but uh, but no, that's kind of how it all how how it all um kind of happened. And look at it, it was a huge learning experience. Um, still looking back, there's a lot of things I would have done differently, but um year on year you learn more and you implement new things and people come and go and girls come and go but yeah. that's kind of how it started out it was really I suppose a game of chance for me really to get involved in it um I certainly don't regret it I'm you know four years on five years on I'm, I'm still you know coaching in Camogie I'm very fortunate to be coaching the highest level of it now and I'm just really enjoying my my time with it you know yeah, fantastic. And it is. It's great. And we'll say as a manager, first of all, you would have faced a few challenges and, you know, were they major obstacles or was it always smooth running? You know, I'm sure the county board were very welcoming and very, I suppose, resourceful. But I'm sure you you met some stumbling blocks on the way, as does every every manager when it comes to, to managing uh, county teams. In particular, women, Aaron, I think, from our perspective, personally... You're talking to the Galway Miners now. Yeah, we're talking yeah. to the Galway Miners. Galway Miners. I'm sure it has been, has been difficult. And again, you know, we all, we all have our difficulties, as we know, but as a manager... You know what was your main what was your main challenge? challenge? Um I, I suppose the main challenge is is having you, you, Finsky on the background. Uh, <laughs> who never who never turned up, honey. She was very selective. <laughs> Trying to get a hold of Eve on the phone. That was probably exactly, the biggest challenge. Yeah. But um no, look, I think the, the the biggest challenge I found was it was actually the unpredictability of it. Um yeah. you would think you have the group in a really good place and then a bomb just gets dropped in you. It could be a parent that rings you out of the blue. It could be a girl who wants to speak to you after training. And you'd be getting in the car thinking, how have I ended up here? Um, yeah. You have all your boxes ticked and, and you think you've done everything right and you've communicated really well. Mm. Um, and, you know, and you still just end up in in, in a bunch of trouble. So um, it was that unpredictability of it, I suppose. In my first year, I certainly would have clashed with parents, um, not intentionally, of course, but um, I think particularly you see it not only girls, but in boys too. Um, a lot of parents are, are are kind of playing the game still through their kids and yeah. they, they look at it in a very insular way. They look at it in a very biased way and towards their own child. And sometimes you can't really even try to reason with that. You can't try to break that down because... It is what it is. Um, so the first year I was very green. I was, you know, I, I was 29 years of age, taking over an inter-county team. I'd never worked with girls before. So I learned the hard way. I certainly did. Um, but as we headed into year two and year three, you kind of understand how to communicate with females, their parents, how it runs. And I think last year, um, that 2023, you know, I really think felt I, I had it down to a T. You know, thank God last year there wasn't any um, incidents with with players or parents it all just ran quite smoothly so it, it was just a learning process um I definitely feel coming in as an outsider to Camogie at my age and having no real pedigree I couldn't say I hurled senior for Galway or done this or done that I didn't do any of it um but I certainly probably felt in the first year or two you probably had to garner a bit of respect from people um but once look, we got over. It. Um, I think in, in a position like that, you, you just you need to, whether you're right or whether you're wrong, 
you just need to, to have conviction in what you're doing. You, you mm. know, at the time, every decision is right. You make a decision at the time, it's the right thing to do. Just because it turns out wrong doesn't make it the wrong decision. Exactly. Um, so you just, have, you just have to be convicted in what you do. You're not going to keep everyone happy. And But I think um, a big issue we had, and if I had my time again, I certainly wouldn't have taken the, the size of the panels that we took. Um, you know, yeah, we were about years. talking about that there. Maybe yeah, like oh, the years that I had massive. it, you know, we, we took 35, 38, and 38. Now, on one side, you kind of have to in Galway because the Galway schools, they don't have a provincial championship to play in. You know, yeah. they don't have to fight their way through Munster, Ulster, Leinster. Mm. So you're guaranteed you're going to have a school at A, B, and C in the national competition. So that mm. takes 50% of your squad for the month of February. So then you have to backfill that to have a feasible training number. And then, you know, fair play to, you know, Sarsfields, they're a really good club and you know, they'll always feed into your minor teams. And, you know, those girls, which is fantastic achievement, they're gone in January because they're playing in the Ireland yeah. series quite often. So, you know, it's a catch-22. If you don't bring the big panel, you don't have anyone to train with. But then trying to keep that panel happy is very, very difficult. Very, yeah, very difficult. Yeah. But yeah. I liked what you, what, what Aaron did when we had the minors. Like, uh, do you remember Ali Hesnan one day when she was number 35 on the panel? You know, we didn't talk everybody. And the next week she had worked herself so hard at training that she worked herself back to number eight. Mm. And then she was on the team for the rest of the year. Now she's playing senior county, yeah, do you know? Yeah. So it's sometimes like having an open-ended panel, but I know what you're saying. You can't talk everybody, but if you don't talk, like if you have a role in panel kind of that, you know, that nobody is just kind of happy out to sit on the bench, but that they may be put even off the bench and onto the extended panel, yeah, yeah, that it yeah. kind of keeps it fresh all the time. Everybody's under pressure all of the time. And that worked well, I thought, Aaron, in the minors, do you know, that there was a, a role in panel. It was the best we could do with the big panel. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. somebody's always going to be disappointed and somebody's going to be just happy just to chill out and sit. Yeah, and I think, I'm sure Aaron did it, is, is set your standard at the beginning of mm. the year that this is the way it's going to be. There will be some of you that will be on the extension, or, on the yeah. extension and you might be there always, but if you're happy to do that, that's absolutely fine because you can only play 15 and five subs, do you know what I mean? Yeah. We find that now at the under-16s, we have a panel, panel of 38, as well. 39, mm. 40. Brilliant for in-house training or in-house games because you're always guaranteed a bit of competition. But like that, when they start slipping away with, with their clubs and with their schools, you're 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 struggling to to commune, I suppose, collectively come together as a team. So that so as manager, that would have been your biggest channel or challenge. Were the county board um did they work well with you, Aaron? Was there no stone unturned when it came to resources or but I'm sure um, it was difficult. Well Aaron Aaron had Aaron is lucky enough in the way that Aaron, oh, this was one thing that we weren't short of, and it mightn't have been from the county board. They might have got a big bill at the end of it. Oh, hail on Schlitters. We had, no joke now, a thousand Schlitters in this, like, carry plastic box thing. And I'd say it had to be your uncle, Brendan Holland, that was supplying the goods there. And literally, we started off with a huge amount of Schlitters, and by the end of the... By the end of the year, we were fairly low, weren't we? <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, I look to be fair. To be fair to 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 bring in the lads, like you know, walk into the walk into the warehouse and pick off the shelf uh, and build yeah. it to whoever it was. It was a great luxury because you know, like you go through Schlitters, no matter what team you're with, it at no rate, you know, you're you play a game and you do your shooting drill before it starts, and so you're down 30, 40 balls even at that. So, yeah. um, it was a great luxury because. Martin, as you said about the county board, look, for the most part, I found they were quite supportive. I still maintain a very good relationship with, with Brian Griffin, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of kitting the gear out or the girls out, you know, gear is a big thing for a young girl. You know, it's, it's a to have a, a goal on top with your name on it. Um, it's very important to them. Um, yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's almost a symbol of achievement. It's a symbol of elitism, if you want. Um, as we often said to the girls, you're playing this sport at the top, top level, at the elite level for your age. So, um, you know, having that gear and, and being able to wear that was very important. And to be fair to the county board, they, they certainly supplied that for us in in, in abundance. Um, I suppose the big challenges really was um, was get, getting facilities. You know, that was primarily, yeah, you know, there was a lot of phone calls you and I have had to make, John O'Gorman mm -hmm. had to make. 
trying to get pitches, trying to get training facilities, and Thank you. Um, you know, and look, it's look, it's still the way. I'm sure Sharon with the under 16s or Steve oh, with the minors the this year. Yeah. Uh, look, it's it's um, you know, it's no different. And you know, I'd, I'd often maintain that if, if if our county board had officers in place whose sole purpose was to negotiate with clubs, yeah. um, because you know, I think what you find is um, you sometimes you'll get a pitch. And you'll build up a good relationship, and then someone else comes along and they rent that pitch, and maybe they 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 don't you know maintain that relationship. And then when you ring up to get it again, it's not there, you know, because yeah. everyone is kind of looked upon under the same under the same umbrella. So I think yeah. you know I know a lot of work has been done. I saw a couple of weeks ago there was that proposal about the centre of excellence in the airport, which would be brilliant oh, for everybody. Yeah, but that's brilliant. a long yeah, look, the reality is that's a very long way away, and. It I is. think in the interim, you know, I think in the interim, you know, the, our county board or Galway Camogie needs to be sitting down with clubs, coming to, you know, building good Probably relationships. So. I suppose there aren't, it, and it might be a little bit different down in Waterford. There might be better ground, but like the pitches are absolutely saturated at the minute. Like we had, to, I rang 11, 11 different pitches um, this last week, 11 different pitches to try and get a, a match for a first year girls group. Couldn't couldn't get it, and then Kalosh, <clears throat> uh, then Akaraba, um, Leona, and Kalit in there. They have a pitch in there with the with the the school, mm-hmm. and we went in. And obviously, you can't go into another school to play another school, but we would we went in anyway, and um, to play them in in a little challenge. And my God, their pitch was in immaculate con- condition. So sometimes you'll have a good pitch, you know, somewhere, but more often than not, they're absolutely drenched, drowned at the minute. Uh, what's it like down in Waterford now to get pitches for county teams and stuff like that? Because obviously our new were involved with Connor and the intermediates there last year. And like it, it's literally a begging game. You're begging for no more than what Sharon is at now. Well, you have enough to deal with as manager. And I think that's a serious stress, hmm. you know, on a manager, as you know, um, Aaron, when it comes to resource and pitches. Not only have to try and find a pitch, do you know what I mean? But you're begging as a manager. And then you have to try and get the girls and you're trying to keep everyone happy because the clubs are all over the county. So you're trying to find a happy medium to suit everybody. But now that you're down in Waterford. In the sunny you, south. In the sunny <laughs> southeast, yeah. Um, maybe are you as stressed down there or obviously you're coming as a more of a coach rather than a manager. So less stress. More you success. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to find the pitches. Is know? it Jerry Wallace now, the manager that does all that? Aaron, or obviously because you're not from around there, you do you have to worry about that, or do you strictly have to worry about coaching? Um, yeah, like, look, Waterford's a very different landscape to Galway. It's it's a much smaller county, first of all, a uh, much much smaller county, and the Camogie community in Waterford is much smaller. I, I I think there's maybe half the clubs that we have in Galway, Waterford don't field at intermediate or junior, so you have a an under sixteen team, a minor team, and then a senior team. So the whole oh, community. Yeah in Waterford is very tight knit around community or around Camogie, I should say. Yeah. Um and with that comes a lot of goodwill. Um touch wood, thank God, we've been blessed regardless of the weather conditions. Um I was just saying Difa, you know, earlier in the day there, I I can't recall a time being in Waterford where we haven't had a, a flood lit pitch to train on. Um so that's 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 massive. It's fantastic for the girls. It's fantastic for the quality of sessions that we can deliver. Um, but it all comes back to just the Camogie community in Waterford. They had a fantastic year last year making that breakthrough. There's a lot of goodwill um, toward the Waterford Camogie setup. And um, whose responsibility is it? Well, it's certainly not mine. Um, all the way up in Galway. Um, <laughs> but you know, you even. Even Jerry and, and the rest of the management team, you know, our, our role is to to coach and to educate and to 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 leave Waterford in a better place at the end of this year. We've um, you know, her own liaison for the county board, a guy called Kevin, he's, he's absolutely brilliant. Um, and he sources all that for us. Um, you know, so from our perspective, we have the the luxury of concentrating solely on making Waterford a better team. We're not as as you say, we're not negotiating pitches or or involving ourselves in anything like that. We're we're there to manage, we're there to coach, we're there to prepare a team. Yeah, and I suppose as you said, you, you there's less camogie teams in Waterford, so less, less teams, pitches needed. Well, less yeah, less stress is more success, so there's less pitches needed. And 
we'll say travel wise then now would you find the is the journey very short going looking forward to it or do you have to go down stay over Aaron or how does it work with your with your own work schedule during the um, week yeah I, I do a bit of, I do a bit of both Martina like so yeah. um, sometimes quite often I'll stay I'll stay the night down there so they, they have accommodation down there for me which is much appreciated so um, I'll base myself out of Dungarvan when I go down um, so I'd either attend a session and stay the night or else I'd often come down if it's an early morning session on the weekend I'll go down Friday night and you're there in the morning then um, but depending on work commitments there's often been nights where you, you go down midweek um, so you'd head off at four o'clock in the evening for an eight o'clock session and just get in the car and come home again afterwards so it could be half two by the time you get home again so okay. but um, look that's that's par for the course it's um I wouldn't say it's um uh, it's a shock rent and I when when I took on the role I I knew exactly how far away Waterford was. I was under no illusions what I was getting into. But um look, it's a beautiful part of the world. When the weather's nice down there, the evening's getting longer, it's there's no place like it. It's it's very novel to me because it's not somewhere where I'd have spent any time. So um it's beautiful down there. People are very friendly, it's very um lot to do um when you're not coaching the team. Um but you know, on them, you know, wet and dark winter rainy evenings, it's um it's a bit of a it can be a bit of a depressing drive, all right, coming up and down. <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine. But down to the nitty gritty, I suppose, Aaron, now you're telling us all about the weather now, but you're not you're not giving us a whole lot of info now. Are you looking forward to to, to Saturday and look at coming from a, as a Galway man? playing a Galway team, I'm sure your little bit of insight information will help ye prepare yourselves for, for the league game uh, against Galway and hopefully leave no stone unturned. So far in the league, how have you been doing? Well, they've done the bit tip. Well, I know they have, but I need to ask Aaron. Okay, give us some insight, Aaron. <laughs> give us some insight. Well, yeah, look, I mean, we're still we're still trying to figure it out in Waterford. Like, it's um, a brand new management team, top to bottom. It's brand new. So, the reality of it is we've we've been working with the girls now for three months um we're three league games in we've we've had three really competitive games we did a fantastic win away to tipperary we worked very hard for that Cork pipped us at home um but we were quite happy with with how we turned out that day and, and then we had a good win um in dungarvan two weeks ago against uh against clare so look we're right in the thick of it um to, to progress on to a league final but you know fundamentally we're still trying to figure it all out we're taking it game by game um we we want to just to to really be competitive in division one this year so waterford were promoted into division one for 24 we knew that we would be coming up against the kilkenny's and the corks tips call was clares it was um a different prospect for our ladies and our genuinely look it's going very well you can see by the table but our, our goal was to maintain Division 1 status. It was to accumulate enough points just to stay in Division 1, then move on to the Munster Championship in the All-Ireland Series. So, look, there's no... You're doing that, there, you're doing that. Yeah, yeah there, there, there's no um, doubt about it. You know, we've surpassed that goal. We, we are in Division 1 heading into 25, which is fantastic. But um, in terms of the weekend, look, I, I can't remember genuinely the last time Galway were beaten at home in a competitive fixture. Um, I think... It could have been a game against Kilkenny and Athen Rye maybe four years ago, potentially, um, if memory serves me correct. So we're under no illusions. We have a long journey up um, mm. Saturday morning. Are you going up the night before? Well, no, we're, 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 well, no, you're not going too far, aren't you? Well, over the road. No, we're uh, no, we'll, we're, we're, we're not going to drive not down the road. Uh, you're uh, making no, breakfast. We're not, we're not uh, yeah, they're, they're coming to Caramore for the breakfast before they head over. <laughs> but, um, the uh, no, we're we're going up. We're not, we're traveling the morning. The games look. We've a long journey up. Galway at home. Galway at home are going to be very formidable. Um, so the genuinely, um, teams don't take points off Galway and Galway. So we're coming up. We know what's ahead of us. We want to be competitive for thirty minutes. And at halftime, if there's a game there to be won, we'll talk about maybe going out and pushing to win the game. But um, look, ladies, Galway are a serious team. They're very settled. They've won a lot. They have a lot of experience there. Um, we're still trying to figure ourselves out um, as a management group, as a group of players. We're still getting to know each other. So it'll be a really good test for us to see where we're at, but um, we'll just have to see. You know, We'll just have to see. We're, we're going out to get to halftime, hopefully be competitive at that point in the contest. And if there's a game there to be won, 
try and push on and win at that point. But you're not coming, like you're, you're obviously not coming up to make numbers either. You want to try and go out and and show showcase themselves in the best light. Aaron, over the um, I was saying to um Harky there, um, a while ago that obviously the minor, the minor uh, team that we played in uh, Watford, we literally obviously we we bet them, but it wasn't. It was literally a kind of last minute job. But have many of those minors that. Obviously, you wouldn't have known them, but you you may have known now that they've transferred onto the senior ranks from that minor team in Waterford that we played um, just last year. Have any of the minors kind of taken the step up now to senior? Now that there's no intermediate or junior teams down there, do they do they go straight yeah. in? Or yeah, no, they absolutely have. So, um, like you have Haley there, you have Alana McNulty, Alicia Forrest, Bevan Bowdrin. Um, just don't want to leave out anyone now. Um. Maybe one, one or two more that don't come to mind at the yeah. moment. So, you know, there's been a handful of these girls that have been brought straight into that setup, and um, they're getting game time. They're they're playing regular minutes throughout the league. They're certainly not found found wanting in that regard. So, I just think in Waterford, um, I actually had a conversation with someone else about this recently, and you know why, you know why, for example, we can turn that around so quickly in Waterford and have these girls playing senior camogie and playing it competitively and in Galway it can take a bit longer. The simple answer is in Waterford, the next mm-hmm. level is senior and yeah. that's it. That's it. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, if you took away the Galway intermediate team, I'd be pretty confident to say that a lot of these girls would fast track into senior, but there's no need in Galway because you do have that intermediate mm-hmm. grade there to step into first. So I don't think it's an issue that you know, Waterford are doing something right to their development and, and Galway or Cork or the Kilkenny's aren't. It's just Waterford don't have that intermediate step just yet. Um, hopefully in the future as the numbers increase and the player pool deepens, Waterford will. But right now, it's minor into senior and and that's just the reality of it. And, you know, the girls are, are brought up and they adapt. Yeah. And is there is there a certain culture of Camogie in Waterford, Aaron, or are you bringing with you your own stint do you understand me is it open season or do they say this is what we do in Waterford and this is what we'd like to do or are you given kind of a free free reign to introduce your own style or your own principles of play when it comes to when it comes to games yeah it's not a really interesting question Martina um I think when I was in Galway one of the things that um stuck out to me was in Galway we kind of have this traditional view of the game of hurling and camogie where uh, we like to to strike the ball. We like to to match up fifteen on fifteen. We like to let our technical ability do the talking. Um, you know, you've all been around around selecting panels and stuff. And in Galway, there's always a bias, and I have it myself at times where you'd see a young girl and she might strike the ball really sweetly, or she might be able to control it first time, and you'll hold in on her straight away. You'll pick her out, whereas you might not be looking for a girl that's really athletic or strong. Um, so when you go down to the south of the country, around the Waterfords and the Corks, um, the game is, look, it's camogie, it's camogie. But what I find down there is the players, they're a bit more vers- uh, diversity is probably the right word to use. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, in Galway, you know, a lot of the camogie girls wouldn't be footballers. A lot of the footballers wouldn't exactly. be camogie wouldn't players. Have that natural yeah. physicality. Yeah. In, in in Waterford, we have a, a bunch. We have six or seven dual players. Um, you know, Cork would have the same. So they do bring that different element to it. So mm. they can absolutely play camogie. There's some spectacular players in in Waterford. But you know, if you if you need to change it up and maybe carry the ball a bit more or, or stuff like that, that, they're quite happy to do that as well. So I wouldn't necessarily say there's they have their way or no way. They're a very um, receptive group of ladies. They're eager to learn. They want what's best for themselves. They're willing to try things. So, but one thing I, I I've definitely noticed is, um, they do have more diversity. So, um, they are able to play the game in in different ways. Okay, that's yeah, that's mm-hmm. something. Yeah, you know, especially with coming from football backgrounds as well, they're able to bring that little bit of uh, I suppose versatility and physicality to the game so um you're enjoying it i'm i'm sure it's going to be a long year do you think can you see yourselves well at this moment in time i know it's early to call but let's call a spade a spade you'd like to stay as long as you can in the championship yeah look with the you know the again and it's, it's all new territory for me you know once we finish with the league um in the next three or four weeks 
you're into a monster championship thing quite quickly. So yeah, very competitive too. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So that starts with with, with a, a game against Limerick, I believe, and up up in Limerick. So that's going to be no um, easy feat either. Uh, and then when that's over, you're into a championship, and um, you know for us that includes a trip north to Antrim. We're in a group with Kilkenny and Tipperary. It's it's going to be helter skelter stuff. So um, it's going to be a long summer. Um, and there'll be a lot of miles put in the car for sure. But um, no, look, I wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't looking forward to it. Um, you do if you want to elevate yourself in coaching you do have to get out and about and you have to do things. And like this weekend, sometimes you're going to have to play again your own. Um, yeah. That's just the way it is. But um, aside from all that, genuinely, it's been a great experience so far. Um, you know, Jerry Wallace is a great guy to learn from. Um, I've learned a lot from Jerry. He's been in the game a lot longer than I have. Um, you're working with a new community. They They don't have any you know, uh, predisposed ideas of who you are or what you've done. So it's a real kind of fresh start and, you know, you can bring new ideas and fresh ideas and you're not kind of looking over your shoulder. So I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's a, it was a privilege to be asked. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, um, I suppose a privilege to be asked to go down there and uh, yeah, just enjoying it so far. It's, it's a very novel experience, I suppose. Yeah. And Aaron, you're, you recently qualified in sports performance as well. Um, are you bringing that into the game or are you just kind of solely just coaching? Are you bringing a little bit of the sports performance? Now, I know you have Mike Boland with you, Dean Roach, and um, obviously Jerry Wallace with you. And one of the ladies you mentioned earlier was um, Orla Helen, and she's kind of the lady side of it, like that, that helps you out, that there's a woman on board. Um, is it is it easier working with kind of mostly males on the, I suppose this is a, a a weird enough question, it, like with the males on the kind of management board, and that just Orla comes in kind of at game times, then, or do you just find it easier to work with men or work with women? I know it's a camogie team, but You're putting the spot now. Yeah, so there you go. We know, the, we know the answer to this question. We just want you to confirm it, Aaron. <laughs> Can you confirm um, or deny? Which is it? Well, look, at well, well, half the time when we sit around the table, you know. They talk so fast down there. I, I don't know what they're saying half the time, so we can't fall out. <laughs> they're a bit like John Milan. Do they love uh, their county? They do. But um, <laughs> I know. Look, all um, all joking aside, look, it's um, it doesn't actually make a difference. To be very honest, it doesn't. Um, I I think the main thing is that you just have to. Everyone has to fit together in the room. It's it's almost like a jigsaw. Um, mm -hmm. there's coaches and selectors and managers out there, and it's very easy to hire someone with the wrong brush because they didn't get results or they fell out with a player. But, you know, where, where one coach or manager doesn't fit, they could fit very well somewhere else. So a huge amount of it is just about how people fit together. So to be fair to Jerry, um, when he was assembling this management team, he was very diligent about who he wanted. Um, it wasn't a case of, I want you to come down to Waterford, yes or no, and we'll work out the details. Um, you know, there was an extensive conversations back and forth and ideas, and um, it was it went on for quite some time. It wasn't a, a very quick process um, before before I signed on, and I'm sure the others he went through the same due diligence. So we all get along very well. We all complement each other. Everyone has their roles and their responsibilities. You stay in your lane. You do your job to their best of your ability. If someone needs help, you help them. Um, and, and that's just the way it is down there. There's, It's not a case of working with men, working with women. It's um, it's just Good to answer. be... Good yeah. answer. Good so answer. Exactly. That's, that's what we were waiting for. Yeah, we Good had it written down there. It makes no difference. <laughs> so well done. You passed the test. Mm. No, but, but I suppose... Uh, that Aaron, before before we let you go there, um, like obviously the the best look at the weekend, it's going to be it's going to be a bit of crack now watching to see what happens, and obviously it's only the league in that. But what is your aspirations now? Let's just say you're kind of obviously you're you're sticking with Waterford for now with the seniors, but what do you hope? Are you hoping for Galway senior Camogie, Galway senior hurling, like other inter county senior hurling, senior Camogie? What's your aspirations for Aaron Fox for the next couple of years? Um I look it's it's a difficult question to answer if um you I suppose you have to kind of take it year on year. Um I, I couldn't possibly tell anyone if I'll be in Waterford next year or 
doing anything next year. It's it's a significant toll on on everything. Um, mm-hmm. To do something like this, whether it's Cahill and Galway or me in Waterford or you know Jerry coming over from Cork to Waterford or whoever, Henry Sheffield coming from the beginning, you know, your personal life has to be in order. Um, you have to really work on that um, when you're doing something like this. Um, you have to look after yourself as well, your physical health, your mental health, because that can decline quite quickly. Um, yeah. You know, because in this job, like you're either on a training field, you're in front of a computer looking at a video, or you're spending yeah. hours upon hours on the phone talking yeah. about it. So you do have to kind of look after yourself. So we'll have to see, Philip. I wouldn't be pushing myself at this at this level if I didn't want to kind of go somewhere, achieve yeah. something. But what that will be, or uh, whether it be hurling, camogie, wh- who knows? Um, and like that, it's. I wouldn't say I want this job or that job because come the time if they, you're lucky enough to be offered them, it could be the last thing you want. Yeah, um, so I kind of just taking it, you know, season by season now, seeing how I feel. I'm still a young guy. I'm, I'm 33 years of age this year. So uh, there's a lot of people that think I'm a bit daft even at this. But um, yeah, I look, the goal is to ultimately at some point, you know, get to the, the height of it. But um We'll see how we'll see how we'll see how it um how it pans out and yeah, again on top that. of that like you know it's 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 just a huge commitment you know time even you know yeah. finan- even financially you know you're putting like you're putting money into a car you're you know buying equipment even you know the, the girls are I wouldn't attend every training session it's just not feasibly possible um, yes but the girls are there every night you know we have girls coming from Limerick we have girls coming from Cork from Dublin from college three, four nights a week down to Waterford. And, um, you know, the travel expenses is a huge thing. You know, a lot of these yeah. girls are, I think, uh, Katie Power from Kilkenny, you know, I was reading yeah. a piece that she did, I think, going yesterday before, and, you know, she mentioned that, you know, genuinely some some players are, are turning to their partners or their parents looking for 50 quid for the car for the weekend. I read, I that's read not, that as well, yeah. That's, yeah. that's not, that's um, look, that's, that's not an exaggeration. That's, that's nice. You know, it's happening. But you're like, yeah. We're at it for years. We didn't get a cent. You know, yeah, yeah. We're at it for years. Every, everyone is at it. But look, at you're, you're building a great CV. But you're not CV. doing it for that. You're yeah, not, but it's nice yeah. that you're building a CV and, you know, you, you just, you're on this road. I suppose it's, 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 a, it's a discovery, but it's also getting you places where maybe you'd like to go eventually. That's your aspirations. And if nothing comes of it, at least you've had the experience. And you've done it. And you've done it and you've been there and you've been on the side, I suppose, of the managerial and... You've you've stepped up to the to the senior ranks as coach, and it's it's wonderful. It's a learning process, and I'm sure it's where every coach would like to to be or to aspire to, um, in their in their um coaching career. Yeah, yeah. And the last thing we say to you is bring down a few O'Hale on Schlitters down to um what you call down to Jerry Wallace and see how he likes them. <laughs> Do the uncle a favour, will you? <laughs> well, you're the right colours, Aaron, anyhow, with the blue and white. So any free taps that are going, you can throw oh, them throw over them to up, for, yeah. for our draft. Because I, I could do with one. <laughs> Look, we're, we're so thankful yeah. and um, that you have uh, taken the time out to, to, to chat to us. And what what better time to do it than as you're facing Galway in the league at the weekend. We'll see you at the weekend. We do we genuinely have... mean we wish you luck because it's, it's a big step up. Well, we probably know the goal. We would probably be the better team on the day. Look, but I'm sure you'll, you'll have a few secrets up your sleeve, Aaron, and you'll, you'll, be, you'll be ready come championship. Uh, thanks a million, and thanks for everything you've done for Galway Camogie. And who's to know that you might be you might be back in um, a managerial role uh, at some stage in your future career. Thank you so much. No, thanks a million. Great to, have, great to have me on. I really appreciate it. And yeah, we just keep uh, keep banging the Camogie drum. Yeah, yeah, we sure will, sure. and you do the same down in the sunny I presume, southeast. And I presume you've subscribed to us. You better have subscribed. <laughs> all of four followers now are going well. And, and tell, all, <laughs> tell all the women down in Waterford that you were on tonight, and the only way they can see is to subscribe to the Maroon and White. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and we, I better say hello to everyone down in Dungarvan, all the Veals, Eamon Veals family is all down there, so he's always going on about Dungarvan. So yeah. if they're not looking after you down there, I'll, I'll tell Eamon Veal. No, well, well looked after. No, I, I, I can't complain. Well looked after. Well, keep the Galway flag flying below yeah. Waterford. Thanks a million, Aaron. Thanks a million, God bless you. Take care. All right, mind yourself. Bye. 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 Oh, that was lovely. Yeah, great, yeah. To, great to see yeah. kind of a different perspective again. And yeah, exactly, because, you know, I'd have heard of Aaron through you, Aoife, and with, with minors and dealing with them on the phone with the yeah. with the school kids. And sure, look at he's 
add into his profile, add into his CV. He's young, he's young, kind of, he's he's young manager. He says himself and he just wants to get on with it and give something back. And, and it's funny, that, you know, kind of when he was saying about the challenges, that mm. the parents were the challenges. Yeah. We all have. I know, that, but, that's, that, that, but I think it was because he was so young starting out that they probably thought, I will test this guy a little bit. Yeah, exactly. No but he studies grounds. Grounds. No, he studies grounds. He knows the form. He's very upfront. He's very honest. And, and he's in it for Camogie. Do you know he's, he's in it for the right reasons. And you can't think. shoot down anybody for... Like we can't shoot down any volunteers and you know referees, linesmen, yeah, no you know you coaches. Respect them to the everyone. Day. Yeah, and I always say, look, if you're, if you're going to give out about coach, or put yourself in their shoes, do and yeah. walk that mile, and it's not a nice place to be. It's um, it can be very lonely. Lonely a oh, job lonely now and again. Um, oh, I'm a type less. She, she can sing as well. But anyhow, <laughs> listen, you we know. will be unfortunately taking a break for Easter because, as you know, I'm we're flying sure out to the Maldives doing oh, a podcast we're out there. Out yeah. to the Maldives yeah. for our Easter holidays. I know that we'll be stuck in, 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 in some field at some camp, Aoife. Well, yeah, and, actually, um, the Erdogan uh, I mean, Easter camp is Easter camp, up, and yeah. so has Ballandurian. So I know that you're busy. all involved. In, uh, and just a, a final word to make sure all the the Camogie clubs out there, you know, get yourself involved through the Camogie Association and take on these new um, incentives, you know, from the Camogie Association when it comes to teenage uh, camps and get the girls involved playing Camogie, extra activities. There's a 500 euro um, a sponsor, incentive, I suppose, or, yeah. incentive, yeah. For your club, if each you take of your on. clubs will, will take on if you're able to take on a few camps. In, in, the, in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you look up the Camogie Association website, uh, get involved, and even the Manaw programme, as Aoife was yeah, involved in Yeah, that will be it. rolled out now over the next couple of weeks within clubs, so make sure you ask if, if you're just a social Camogie player or you haven't played it before, or you want to get out with your child, this new Manaw programme um, you know, will, will get you involved that way. So yeah. don't, don't be worrying about like, oh, I haven't played it and I'll make a fool of myself. It's just for the crack, social. And we'll teach you the skills and then you can go back and teach them to your own kids. Because, again, I, I know I speak a lot about the non-traditional families that wouldn't know this. Like, I wouldn't know anything about many other sports. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. So just get out there and do. And I suppose the very last thing, I have to wish our hurlers for a change. It's not you. The Gart Hurlers, uh, Gart Community School Hurlers in the All Ireland Final tomorrow versus Portona in the Community Schools All Ireland Final. So the best of luck to best of luck, Pat Canole, Mike Healy, and um, Dave Maloney. Okay, well done. so well done. That's, so so that, that's kind of it. Yeah, we'll take a break. Uh, Easter holidays are coming, and you know the teaching <laughs> profession <laughs> has us has us worn out. Um, but we will be back on board in the next two weeks. Thanks to everyone who's either listened or watched us. And please hit that button, subscribe to the Maroon and White, do what you do best for Camogie and help keep uh, Camogie on the map. So it's goodbye for me. And goodbye for me.